the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. The first dimension of encounters that we need is encounters by the word. Please write encounters by the word. You can put in bracket light from scripture. This is the first kind of encounter that everyone who will do exploits for God must have consistently so the encounter that comes by the word is not a one-off experience i will tell you the difference between the two encounters after i explain them to you this is the chiefest of all encounters that believers must desire this kind of encounter can be a daily encounter pending on your press and your passion encounters by the word light from scripture first samuel chapter 3 and verse 21 first samuel chapter 3 and verse 21 and the lord appeared again in shiloh for the lord revealed himself to samuel in shiloh by the word of the lord the lord revealed himself revealed himself revealed himself but he used the word to reveal himself do not forget the object of the revelation was the lord but he used the medium of the word to reveal himself god can reveal himself through the word and himself means his wisdom himself means his power himself means his favor are we together himself means your prophetic blueprint in him Everything that is contained in God can be revealed to the believer via an encounter by the word. Light from scripture. I hope you know that scripture on its own does not give you revelation. Do you believe that? You can open the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, and read it like a Christian book or like some novel and not get anything from it until light. There is light that is hidden in the verses of scripture. There is light that is hidden in the parables of scripture. There is light that is hidden in the prophecies of scripture. Until that light leaps out of scripture, you have not had an encounter. What you call Bible study is your exploring scripture until an encounter is established Jesus spoke and he said a lot of coded statements and the people who sat at his crusade some of them left angry it was too hard for them many times you see the disciples who come and say please explain this thing to us listen ladies and gentlemen the word of God was so designed or scripture was so designed that hidden in these stories you read is a mystery. Some of these mysteries are about you that you cannot see. Is it not in your Bible? When, when Isaiah said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he himself did not understand the extent of what he was talking about. He just wrote, holy men wrote as they were inspired of the Holy Ghost. Are you learning now? When Jesus came, the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, he found the place. You don't find till you search. He found the place. That means Jesus at age 12, he was telling the scribes, what do you know about the Messiah who should come? He was finding a place. Jesus himself needed an encounter with scripture to find the place where it was written. He opened the book and found. The Bible did not say he opened the book and went there. He found by searching. The place where it was written concerning him. Leave verse 17. That means there is a place in this Bible where it was written concerning you. It's not your name that was written there, but the code of your destiny is hiding there. Listen, please believe what I'm telling you. A day will come you will open the Bible and you will know that what was written, nobody has fulfilled it yet. I know you will not believe it because you are not in the Bible days. But it is not everything written here that has been fulfilled. There are things the prophets wrote that is about you, about your destiny. 
you will not find Nigeria as Nigeria here you will not find Koinonia as Koinonia here but it is here that is the mysterious thing about the scripture encounters open your portion to you like so that you will see listen Hagar was crying with her son having been banished by by uh, what's her name now Abraham's wife Sarah the Bible says she was in the desert there was water in the desert an oasis there but she could not see until she cried unto the Lord and the Bible says the Lord heard the voice of the young lad and when he spoke to her and told her to go back and submit to her mistress the Bible says her eyes were open and she saw an oasis you do not know the treasures that are hidden here. Let me tell you, when the day that light from scripture comes to you, huh, you, can, you can have out of a sentence, only two words will come out. And that's when you will know that it, it is the entire verse is for you. But two words will come out that are not even connected to the verse. Listen, let me teach you something tonight. There is the doctrinal composition of scripture and there is the prophetic composition of scripture. This is where theologians miss it, respectfully speaking. Are we together? The Bible from from a historic standpoint is a book of archaeology a book of literature a book of history are we together a documentation of events past like many other books only that this is religious and spiritual in context but then to the believer in Christ there is the doctrinal composition of scripture that means contained within scripture is a methodical arrangement of doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina a body of truth that empowers a disciple to look like his master do you understand that now but there is the prophetic composition of scripture this is where you can read a scripture like Jesus wept now contextually he was speaking about Lazarus but it can come as a revelation to you that has nothing to do with Lazarus light from scripture let me show you an example give us Galatians chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 Galatians 2 1 and 2 Paul is speaking now watch this then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also verse 2 it says I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles but privately to them which are of reputation now hold on from a doctrinal standpoint this is the apostle giving his journey are we together but i want you to read the first six words of verse two ready one to read one more time one more time you can be in a place of bible study and only those six words come out i went up by revelation that means men rise be it takes beyond desire we go up we rise dimensions in the spirit the Holy Ghost will connect it to you with the scripture that says come up hither and I will show you and you will see a meaning from that scripture that only you will understand it is not a doctrine but it is a ladder for you to climb and excel on the strength of that light a dimension of exploit is open up to you and when you tell people the scriptural basis they will read it and sometimes be angry they will say you are lying I've read what you read but they did not see what you have seen light from scripture listen I know what I'm saying oh there are no masters but there are people who have been engraced in areas when it has to do with encounters believe me I know what I'm saying hmm. so you will see someone teaching and he will bring a scripture that does not make sense but wait to see the result that comes out of that revelation just because you have knowledge does not mean you have light no light is revelation that comes from knowledge Ephesians 1 let me show you are we Bible students pray in the spirit while we turn there Ephesians 1 from verse 17 amen do you know 
for someone tonight the kind of passion God is putting in your heart you will go back and you will open your Bible it will no longer be trying to finish verses or trying to finish there is you will start searching for it there is something for me there is a word for me there are many of you who in the place of prayer certain words will come it's not all the scripture that will come just one word you can be praying in the spirit and the only word you will hear is rest you will think you understand what was said these are spirit communications you are having an encounter by the word so you go and find where rest was written and you will think that rest just means a state of not doing anything no that rest to you may be the end of all struggles that rest to you may be the end of all afflictions. Give it to us. 117. Let's read together. Read it slowly and try as much as you can by the Spirit to use your mind as you read. Ready? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Keep that scripture there. You went to school. Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge. So where is it found? That, that means from that knowledge, you will still open it up. There is wisdom from the knowledge. There is revelation from the knowledge. You can carry the knowledge. It's the same thing as carrying a phone, a pack of phone. You know, you bought a gadget and then it's wrapped and you carry it. That's how knowledge is. Within that pack is the phone. Within that pack is the charger. Within that pack is the manual. You can carry the phone and when they say, show me your phone, you can lift that which you got. You are right, but you are wrong. You are right in that it is true there is a phone inside, but you are wrong because you are not going to put the pack on your ears to walk. So you can be carrying a pack of phone forever, saying, listen, all those who have phones, stand up and you will stand up. But for years, all you are holding is a pack. So Paul says, beyond the knowledge that you have, there is wisdom in it. There is revelation in it. And he's saying, pray. Pray. Revelation in the knowledge of him. So the first thing you need is that knowledge. But when it comes, you don't stop there. Where is the wisdom? For instance, you will read a scripture and a story. The knowledge is that story. But where is the wisdom? Where is the revelation? The power is in the wisdom. The power is in the revelation. Hallelujah. Verse 18. It says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened look at the things you will know from that knowledge number one when the eyes of your understanding are enlightened from that knowledge you will know the hope of your calling is hidden in that story you will know the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints they are all hidden there but if you just read it as a story you will just read it as Pauline epistle full stop knowledge without wisdom without revelation is someone learning light from scripture I've shared with you the story but for the sake of those who have not heard my eyes will be open to this encounter dimension in a vision so I am having this vision and I'm seeing a giant like a gate very big ancient gate and then that gate had smaller doors, like smaller boxes, like how a post office, the, you know, the old context of our post office boxes. And there were scriptures that were written on every one of the boxes. And it was opening and closing, opening and closing, several of them. And every time the box opened, light will come from it. And I did not understand what that vision meant until the Spirit of God told me that every one of those scriptures written that is knowledge, but the light, the grace to defend it, the revelation that comes with power is the light that comes out of it. So you can be quoting scripture. Remember my story about the man carrying a phone. For 10 years, you can be carrying a, a phone in its pack and never enjoy the blessings there. Why? Because it must be unboxed. Am I right? 
and when it is unboxed you must know how to combine it to work the phone may most likely be dead or not charged enough you must know how to use the charger to plug the charger and then use the manual to operate the gadget you can be holding a phone that is of a lesser quality uh, or if someone can be holding a phone that is of a lesser quality than yours but that other person can navigate and manipulate that phone in a way that you will stand you almost want to throw your phone and it is higher in quality the difference is that from that pack they have opened and they have learned what to use inside the greatest healing evangelists in the world and the least all use the same scripture the greatest healing evangelists and the least all believe that is the same Holy Spirit working so what is the difference what is the difference between say for instance a great healing evangelist crusade Reinhard Bonke these were men who read the same scripture there is hardly any scripture shared by those men that it was your first time seeing and some of us for instance can be masters in the area of revelation and you stand before these men and they will read a simple scripture you will help them finish the scripture yet you cannot command the result that they got from the scripture the difference is an encounter light came from it to them ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 and 2 let's read together please give it to us and he said unto me son of man stand upon thy feet and i will speak unto you let's read verse two together ready one to read and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and i heard him that spake unto me the spirit entered when he spake did the bible not say the entrance of thy word not the reading of it the entrance so the word can be personified it can enter a man the entrance of your word giveth light. The reading of it prepares you to receive light. It does not give light. No. Mm -mm. Is someone learning? There have been scriptures that I read for all my life. And I read it and read it and read it. I could not see certain things there. Aside from maybe just the doctrinal content, the theological presentation, or the contextual presentation of that scripture. From a doctrinal standpoint, when you read the Bible, you read contextually and you draw the lesson as revealed in the scripture. When you study systematic theology, they teach you to use scripture to compare scripture. Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. Are we together now? You allow the Bible to interpret itself. But when you get to the prophetic dimension, it will be unwise to believe that all that is contained in scripture is just the doctrinal composition. The Bible is a spiritual book. As much as it is a historic material, as much as it's a theological manual, am I together? Am I, are we together? The prophetic dimension of scripture cannot be gotten. Your transformation and having a theological basis gives you an edge. Please listen carefully. The theological basis contextual understanding of scripture from a doctrinal standpoint it prepares your mind to even be able to derive the prophetic meaning but let me tell you the truth there is scripture speaking to believers but there is light from scripture speaking to you that will not apply to any other person encounters is someone learning so for instance God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko, will tell you that he was studying his, his scripture and in the Pauline epistles, he says that um, he that cometh from above, or the epistles generally, he that cometh from above is above all. You've read that scripture, but it came as light to him and he said it is far above the gospel, really. Far above mentality, you would hear him say. And he's been able to prove it with his life. Now you can copy it and say far above mentality. But to you it is just somebody's testimony. It has become the same thing as what you are reading here. So you must stay until light comes for you. Are we together? You would hear him say for instance that he studied on, on, on you know and found the keys 
You know, after reading the books of the Copelands on prosperity, and he found the key and spin and say, yeah, I can never be poor. You turn around like that and you find out that absolutely nothing happens because you are just reading a man's story until you get to the scripture and light opens. The scripture God will show you will be far. It may not even be a finance scripture at all. For instance, for you, the key to your prosperity can come in John 3.16. That is a classic salvation scripture. But God can turn it around and bring forth light. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There are so many things you can bring out there. Love, the world, giving, believing, life. All of them can be put and rearranged again the way that only your eyes can see and from that scripture a conglomerate can come up and when people ask you and say what empowered your result you will tell them an encounter with john 3 16 and the evangelist will say i was preaching before you were born i have exhausted that scripture it is called light from scripture say light please shout it say light light from scripture light from scripture light from scripture light from scripture do you know the holy spirit is so the word of god is so is so is so rich full of light that do you know for somebody the secret to your longevity can just come by reading genealogies not even i shall not die the holy ghost can just take you to begin to read adam i mean seth the son of adam the son of god and that's it and to everybody that is just genealogy that was documented but for you light will come from it are we together yes for someone god can just use the books of the bible to teach you influence why were there two women whose names were captured as books of the bible mary was not there the mother of jesus sarah was not there the matriarch of the covenant and yet there were two ordinary women that can be a revelation for you that no matter your lowly estate, you can rise to a point where you edge yourself. Are you seeing light from scripture? Someone can just read the book of Esther and the book of Ruth. Every one of these two women, the, number one, they started from their lowly estate. For Ruth, it was even a complicated issue. Her marriage, her husband died, children died. You would think there was such a generational curse on her. And yet she, she, she accessed light until the Bible is now named after her. So you can rise up from that light and say in the name of Jesus, I will edge my relevance for the kingdom in the sands of time. And all of a sudden, from that scripture, a foundation will come up. From that scripture, a prophetic prayer intercessory ministry will come up. From that standpoint, a healing ministry will come up. And when people ask you, you will say, I don't know why my father named me Esther. But one day I was reading the book of Esther and I stopped seeing the queen. I saw myself. Please help them. The assignment of revelation is to change the historic scenery and put you there. All of a sudden you will see that where the disciples were, they suddenly vanish in your mind. And you are the one there walking with Jesus and the Lord walking with them. You are no longer looking at Galilee. You are no longer looking at Nazareth. You are looking at Abuja and Nigeria and America. The Lord walking with them. Now to someone who is not you, it does not make sense. But light has come to you. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? This is how people use scripture to change their world. Just quoting and reciting will leave you and end you in disappointment. Believe me. It is now from a, the, the way that you access light from scripture is to start by being a student of scripture. Are we together? Even if you do not understand doctrine, start by studying it even if it's just as a historic material. That initiation is a draw unto me and I will draw unto you. Take the step like the prodigal son and you have initiated the process that brings light from scripture. There are many scriptures. You check my Bible and 
there are all kinds of blue barrel this one start this one i will you will see me with arrows as if i'm trying to build a house connect it to one scripture and write one small scripture verse five and i start it so that i don't forget these are all products of scriptural connections i shared with you my encounter in the renard bonke crusade we're getting to the second dimension but that while that encounter was happening i was caught up in the spirit seeing a bird the holy spirit now just soaring two scriptures just came to me immediately genesis chapter 1 1 and 2 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth so there is creation he says and the earth was without form it was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep here was the scripture for me and the spirit of god moved 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 not the spirit of god was around the spirit of god moved allowed access upon the face of the water that means every time there is trouble before you speak verify that the holy ghost is there first speaking without god had to patiently wait for the holy ghost to move before he spoke and it came by revelation that the union of the movement of the spirit and the spoken word is what creates the miraculous today this that you see is a product of that revelation so when I say in the name of Jesus, let doors be open and you'll see testimonies with all humility. It is not just because a man is powerful. There is a, an intelligent encounter construct in my spirit that sponsors that speaking. Are we together? The man, Papa Kenneth Copeland, he so studied the blessing that in his simplicity of expression, it became such a revelation in his heart. He would hardly make a statement without saying, the, you check his Bible and you will see, I mean, all kinds of attachments across that Bible. He so meditated on the blessing, it entered his spirit. He will share many scriptures to you that you will see as basic, sometimes annoyingly basic, but the results that, them, that show. I have listened to many, many of Reinhard Bonke's teachings. I have listened to many, many of Billy Graham's teachings. I'm a student of history. I'm a student of revival. I remember one time studying T.L. Osborne's materials and I was just trying to find out, my goodness, do you know, history and technology did not do justice to capture the manifestation of the spirit in the life of these people we just have a few documents but my goodness if god opened your eyes or history allows you or technology allows you to see the extent of the impact of these people today we have social media everything can be captured so they can see the extent of the workings of god in your life but those petrarchs did not have that privilege when you read the Bible and read what happened with Jesus and what happened with the apostles, you will think all that the Bible documents is all that happened. That's not all. John chapter 20 and verse 31 is there in your Bible. It says many miracles. Give us 30, 30, not 31, 30. John 20, 30. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples. Read on. Which are not written in this book. Only God knows what else happened that were not written in this book. We know water turning to wine because it was written. We know Lazarus. We only know three dead people who came back to life in the ministry of Jesus. But only God knows how many more. We know the centurion's daughter. We know the widow at Nain's son. And we know Lazarus. But only God knows how. How many more? encounter by the word can you lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry from the depth of your heart light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light my life light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord me lord 
Man of God, pray. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light the candle. Light me, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Listen. There are people here who are running businesses. Now, you can read all of your educational materials, respectfully speaking, and commendably so, from Yale and Harvard, Stanford Business School, all of the business schools, but you will search and search, and then you will find them suggest strategies so far. But one day, you will open this mysterious book, and while you are searching, the Holy Ghost intercepts your search and you will see something you never saw. And Isaac sowed in that land and received that same year. You have heard it. It's been preached in seminars, but it will come as light for you. And when I talk about Isaac sowing, it will have nothing to do with money. And Isaac sowed in that land and received that same year. What will come out of that scripture for you is that same year. The same year. The same year. The year a man sows, he can reap that same year. God can give you this as a revelation for speed. That can come for you as a revelation for speed. That there is no delay in your life. The year you sow is the year you reap. The year you sow is the year you reap. The year you sow is the year you reap. That can turn your life and turn your organization forever. Can I tell you the truth? Please, as you are listening to me, let there be a cry in your heart. Baptize me with the spirit of revelation. Baptize me with the spirit of revelation. The assignment of revelation is to open your eyes to see what God is saying. To open your eyes. You are a man of God. You cannot do end time ministry without revelation now you must be sound knowing scripture study to show yourself approved understand the doctrinal structure of scripture but by all means you must access the prophetic dimension of scripture just camping around the doctrinal orientation may not suffice there is still a layer of scripture the prophetic dimension of scripture Ah, let someone receive a baptism the baptism of the spirit of revelation you are a teacher of the word I impart that grace upon you may the eyes of your understanding be open in the name of Jesus Christ may the eyes of your understanding be open be enlightened be enlightened be enlightened in the name of Jesus Christ I tell you fire is falling on someone you are receiving the baptism of the spirit of revelation the eyes that see beyond the letters the eyes that see beyond the letters the eyes that see beyond the verses the eyes that see beyond the verses receive it I impart it upon you in the name of Jesus Christ Pray in one minute. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Fire is falling in this place tonight. Many of you, you have come to a realm in the spirit where God is pulling you. Pulling you and telling you enough of this nominal Christianity. Watch this. Let me show you something. 
Let me show you something. Give us John chapter 5. 38 or 39. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord just put this in my spirit. Now watch this. It says, And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom ye had sent, him ye receive not. Watch this now, 39. It says, Search the scripture, for in them ye think you have eternal life. Now watch this. No matter what revelation you bring out of scripture, I need to balance this. No matter what revelation you bring out of scripture, here is the litmus test. It says, they are they which testify of me. If your revelation and your encounter, listen to me, if your revelation and your encounter with, with scripture is bringing you into another experience that is not forming Jesus in your life, the devil and a familiar spirit has taken advantage of that scripture. I need to say this because I hope you know the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit. And every spirit has an advantage over the physical realm, even if it's demonic spirits. Are we together? So that, please, whether you are an usher or not, just help those under the anointing. There's fire burning in this place. God is bringing. Every time God brings these things, it is to confirm his word. So whilst, whilst, don't be distracted. This is what he has made out of our lives. This is koinonia. Listen. Hallelujah. The scriptures are they that testify of me. Because there are many people who in their passion, praying and fasting, they began to study scripture and familiar spirits came and started manipulating the pages of scripture, opening them to dimensions and using scripture to teach them witchcraft, using scripture to teach them necromancy, using scripture to teach them interactions with strange spirits that are not of God. They have come up with several practices respectfully speaking even begun ministry with several practices just because there is a scripture for it in the bible does not mean it is testifying of jesus the litmus test is not just the scripture compliancy of what you are saying that at the end of your revelation we must see jesus revealed in all his dimensions in koinonia we say jesus revealed jesus glorified that means if you claim you have had a healing scripture by revelation now we have no right we were not there when god was opening the prophetic dimension this is why the 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 study of scripture first layer a historic study second layer a doctrinal study third layer a prophetic study if you just jump to the prophetic whereas you are not a student of scripture you will most likely encounter familiar spirits the accuracy of that prophet that prophetic navigation is balanced by your doctrinal understanding is someone learning now so you understand the entire frame of the doctrine of scripture it is going to be difficult for any spirit to manipulate and give it a prophetic meaning that is not of christ because doctrine will make you reject that revelation are we together acts chapter 2 and verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine 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 most believers and respectfully speaking if you are called into the apostolic and prophetic ministry, can I tell you, stop chasing signs and wonders and go and settle to become a student of doctrine. Once you do not understand scripture from a contextual perspective, you have to be vast because you are going to be facing influences. It is based on your doctrinal balance that discernment works. Discernment is directly derived from the health of your doctrinal understanding. If you do not understand doctrine, there is no, even if you understand scripture and you do not understand doctrine, you will be misled. Because the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak any language you want. I have taught you here in the Bible, Satan spoke. In the Bible, men spoke it from their backsliding state. 
in the Bible there were men who spoke before and after their encounters and it's not the same thing they said in the Bible God spoke in the Bible demons disguise themselves as angels of light so just because you found it in the Bible does not mean it is of God listen to me every scripture in the Bible is only called the Word of God if it reveals Christ listen and learn every scripture in the Bible only becomes the Word of God when it passes the litmus test of the revelation of Christ Christ as wisdom Christ as power Christ as favor there are many people who are sound in scripture but their practices are antichrist the reason is because they focus on the the prophetic dimension of scripture and ignore doctrine and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation am i right on that yeah. we must become students of doctrine where truths of the scripture are methodically arranged for instance when you want to learn doctrine according to hebrews chapter 6 you will see that the believer's journey watch this the believer's journey is made up of six foundational doctrines that if you do not know those doctrines to now begin to explore deeper things in the kingdom will only leave you in confusion the bible arranges six doctrinal foundations that are pillars for the believer are we together the foundation of repentance from dead works faith towards god verse 2 the doctrine of baptisms laying on of hands resurrection of the dead eternal judgment these are doctrinal pillars now look up please the gospel the believers journey as far as exploring god you know that the old testament came in types and shadows it was adumbrations various adumbrations and revelations of jesus christ and when Jesus now showed up as captured in the four synoptic accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were all eyewitness accounts according various perspectives. Matthew, for instance, there was a way, an approach that he gave the revelation of Jesus. Are we together? Mark, you notice that Mark focused on the acts of Jesus. There was no, there, there were not too much historic documentation. Mark chapter 1 goes straight into, you will not even know Jesus was born if you depend on Mark alone. It just goes straight into the manifestations. Are we together? This is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus. Does not talk about his life. Just started. And then Luke was the one who took out time to give us a detailed historic view. When you study the account of Luke, it archives the humanity of Jesus meticulously so. And then John talks about his divinity. It starts immediately John 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God you don't find that kind of account in Matthew you don't find it in Mark it was John that spoke about the ministry of the Holy Spirit the most John was the the synoptic account that captured the ministry of the Holy Spirit from chapter 15 chapter 16 are we together now yes so when you study the gospels they give you the foundation the birth the earth work of jesus down to his death his burial his resurrection but the gospel will never give you the revelation of what the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus meant none of the disciples understood it it tells you the story when you want to understand the revelation of Jesus, it's not the gospel you study. You study the epistles, not even the book of Acts. Mm -mm. The study, the theological framework for the believer's stability starts from the book of Romans. When you study it down, are we together? The book of Acts and the book of the Revelation are two peculiar books. They will not give you doctrinal accuracy. No. Because the book of Revelation was a man's revelation of Jesus Christ. And it says, right. And these were written to the seven churches in Asia Minor. Are we together now? All the 22 chapters there. Same thing with the book of Acts. But when you now begin, Paul's theological exegesis starts from Romans 1. His mentorship, his real apostolic ministry. Now, Jesus said, 
it is expedient that I go, that the comforter will come. Are we together? He says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. That means what he was telling them was not yet all truth. The all truth was what Paul began to teach in Ephesians chapter 1. He says, now, this Jesus you know who died, he was exalted, now we have been raised with him. It was a Pauline epistle that helped the believer to know the implication of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And the implication to the believer, it was Paul who brought us into the knowledge of the gifts of the Spirit. We never knew that the Holy Spirit even had gifts. It was Paul that brought it and arranged it. It was Paul that opened us up to the fruit of the Spirit. It was Paul that opened us up from a theological standpoint to the subject of warfare. Ephesians chapter 6, you see. Are we together? When you read from verse 10, it says, Finally, brethren, when he was done teaching the church in Ephesus, it says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then he now opens us up to a mystery. He says, Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Jesus did not open us to this, but he told us that the Holy Spirit is going to come. Is the Greek expression, Alos paracletus the paraclet the one who is of the same kind he will come to become an extension of his ministry i'm telling you all of this to teach you that you need a doctrinal framework to be able to now start pressing for the prophetic dimension of the word so there is a historic dimension of the word to give you a general appreciation of scripture events as they happen leading to Jesus Christ the early church are we together now I broke to you that the theology has a number of dimensions that we study there is theology itself from the word theos the study of divinity there is um, there is demonology there is Christology there is soteriology are we together now all of this together there is ecclesiology the study of the church there is eschatology the study of the end times all this together so you can study the bible from an educational standpoint and that is profitable the next layer is now studying the bible to understand doctrine the believer's structure for growth and maturity so as a matured believer, your maturity is not just in laying hands on people and they fall down. Your doctrinal understanding, you must be able to arrange the Bible in a way that makes doctrinal sense from creation to the fall of man. Are we together now? Yes. Down to Abraham, Moses, and everything that happened, the prophets major and minor. Are we together? Yes. Then you get to the point from Malachi, theologically about a period of 400 years. There was no manifestation of God whatsoever as revealed to men, except the gospel. The gospel comes with John crying like a madman in the wilderness, repent. And it begins the story that leads to Jesus. And then Jesus calling together his disciples who would be mentored to become apostles. The dispensation of the Holy Ghost began officially in Acts chapter 2. And until then, till now, it is still his dispensation. Now, when you study this, then you connect it to Acts, connect it to Revelation. You have a doctrinal understanding of Scripture. Now you are ready for the prophetic dimension where God can bring out meanings that are outside of the doctrinal context to benefit you. And you will not be in error because doctrine protects you. Is someone learning now? This is the danger of just studying one verse, random verses. Today, what do I study? I feel like Psalm 71 verse 1. And you look at it and you want to press, you will get a meaning from it that will make you become like a herbalist. Are we together? You now see something, ah, the urim and the tunim, aha. So where is the version of that in your own life now? You will go and get two things that look like you know, and, and respectfully speaking, is because most people are not doctrinally sound. That is why the prophetic dimension of scripture leads to error. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Now, this is not a call for you to be pointing fingers at people and criticizing people. Whenever you see people manifest extra biblical practices, you owe them your intercession to pray for them. Where God can grant you access because authority has jurisdiction. Are we together? 
where it is within your jurisdiction to help them you can correct them teaching them the truth in love the bible talks of truth in love when truth is not in love it does not reveal jesus forget about acquisition acquisition is tertiary the primary goal of lifting Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy Ghost fire! fire.